Noah, what are we doing today? Um, we're filling the truck. <laughs> All right, guys, today we're going to do a little comparison. Fifth gen 4Runner versus a second gen Sequoia. Um, we're not going to really get too deep into the mods. This is more on paper specs. So when you buy them stock, what can you expect? If you're trying to make a decision on either one of these vehicles for overlanding or for just vehicle excursion, like, like weekend excursions with your family, I'm hoping this is going to help you guys. Um, we actually still, we do own both these trucks. I'm trying to figure out which one to keep. As you see my last video, I was trying to figure out which truck to keep and you, and you don't see either one of them now. They've both been sold. Got rid of the TRD Pro 4Runner for this 4Runner because of the KDSS and a Few other things and I, I plugged that video before yeah. but um okay so what do you think what's one of the what's the one thing you love between these two no what's if you had to pick would you want the forerunner or the sequoia probably the sequoia okay and why because what you said it's got a lot of space in it and you can carry a lot of cargo and it's got the third row Mm -hmm. That's a good point. So third row, my, my sister, these trucks, the TRD Off-Road, the TRD Pro 4Runners do not have third row. So if you want third row, you got to get an SR5 or the Limited. My sister had one. I did a review on that one, the 2019 Limited 4x4. Had the third row and it's really crammed. I mean, if you, if you legitimately have kids or just want to haul family, this is going to be your truck um, with the third row by far. Way more room um, and just functionality wise with a third row it's going to be really tough having a lot of people in there let's take a look to the back we'll go we'll start with the sequoia first <clears throat> and i got the, i got these all these specs from edmonds so total cargo is 120.8 cubic feet of max cargo space you can take a look inside here this is with the third row down show them how the third row works no third row down and second row so i'll pop the little platforms you got to lift these up this creates like almost like a little table. Now this is with the captain chairs. Wait, which end this one? <clears throat> yep, you can do it in the back right there. See those little switches, remember that? You can do it from the side. Yeah. yeah. So this is the uh, captain chair model, front and back. This is a limited, you can get it with the full 60-40 in the back, but this one came with captain chairs and I'll, I'll stand these up. Go ahead and I'll show them how that works. All right, there we go. Pretty cool inside. Got a lot of compartments. Real quick, so this is actually probably one of my favorite features of the Sequoia. I like that it has the power seats and all that. I mean, that's kind of overly plush and maybe another thing to go out down the road. Show them this, Noah. So you have this little hidden cargo compartment. Here, jump on out, Noah. So you can put your uh, your recovery straps, you know, all kinds of stuff. Uh, jumper cables, you know, surf gear, beach gear, whatever. It's really cool. And then, and then some, this is your tool compartment back here. So Forerunner does not have this. I love this this option. And then, you know, the uh, this is the limited model, so it has the JBL um, system, which the TRD Off-Road does not have, only the TRD Pro and the limited, but it sounds amazing. This is a 2008 Sequoia, and this system still rocks. Yeah? It yeah. pumps. Okay, so third row, here's your cargo space. So, you know, if you're thinking it's, this isn't going to be enough, these are canvas back. And, but if you don't think this is going to be enough cargo space, you may want to go with a Sienna. <laughs> okay. Pop out now. Yeah, DVD player. That was aftermarket put in, but I know that some of like I think the platinum model has it built in. Yeah. And you have the rear controls for your passengers. You guys can see that. The rear um, climate control. And then let's get a shot of the uh, front. Now, room and co and comfort wise, cargo space wise, by far the Sequoia trumps the the forerunner the forerunner is still pretty comfortable but the huge captain chairs like lazy boys in this the cabin on this truck with several different things um electronic controls to adjust the tilt even this is, it has its own ability to come up and down Let's see if you can yeah just this front part of the cushion not including the other one you got lumbar so super plush super comfortable significantly bigger than the forerunner inside 
towing this thing is way above it. The Forerunner comes in about, you can tow about 5,000 pounds max, and the Sequoia is 9,100 pounds. So if you need to tow a big trailer, a boat, by far the 5.7 liter that's in this truck is gonna tow way more than the Forerunner will. Um, but that also means the gas mileage is a lot worse. So real world gas mileage with all these mods, I'm getting about 10 to 12 miles per gallon. That's 35 steel bumpers, sliders, roof rack. And then with the Forerunner, stock averages about 18, 19 miles per gallon. But with those mods, it's at about 15 miles per gallon. There is 33s, no real steel bumpers, but three inch suspension, one inch body lift. You know, aerodynamics is, you know, pretty much gone. Okay. so. This whole truck, this Sequoia was built by this guy, Lincoln Steelman. I'll plug him on Instagram. Steelman built, and uh, he even fabricated the custom bumper, everything. Um, this was something I really like he put in, and it's just like a, it monitors your voltage, and it has an additional USB charger. This is a 2008 Sequoia, so there's not a lot of USB um, plugins in the back, but uh, I really like this. It just allows me, if you're you know somewhere remote and you've been using the batteries for stuff like that, you can just monitor your voltage right here. It's a really cool, really cool option. So let's look at the Forerunner rear cargo space. Noah, can you lay all the seats down? Go in the, um, the passenger door and lay the seats down for me. All right. So like I mentioned, big difference in total cargo inside. No third row in this one. TRD models don't have it. You may not need it. A lot of people don't. You know, more, more than one or two kids. Here, you can just help unlock, go around. Oh, you want to do that? No, 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 that one. Oh yeah, you want to do the split? Show them. Yeah, that's kind of a cool feature, you know, just that the mid, this middle part can lay down flat. If you want to throw surfboards up the middle or whatnot, and then it has a 60-40, so it'll flip this down. All manual, not power like the Sequoia, but that's really fast. Show them how that one works, Noah. Yeah. Pull that up. So easy, a kid can't do it. <laughs> Here. Here. It just, it releases the lock. Then you gotta flip the headrest down. Here, Mike, you get a shot of that. Flip the headrest down, push that button, and there's your, you know, get a shot of the back of all that. Go ahead, stay in there now so you can see how that looks. And there's all your rear cargo space with the Forerunner, which is still great, a decent amount of cargo space. The Sequoia, another third more than that. <laughs> there you go. Nice. There's your cargo. Yeah. The other thing that I like about the Forerunner, if for passenger comfort, is that the seats recline. It's actually really comfortable for yeah. a full-size adult. Unlike the Tacomas yes, that are really crammed, which I've had. Put this back up, and then this is your recline. So that's all the way up, and then you can recline. Got different levels, three ways of recline, armrest. Comfort-wise, the Forerunner is still very comfortable interior-wise. Um, comparably to other trucks, definitely like the Tacoma. That's what I struggled with because it's really tight for putting kids in the back and just full-size adults. Anything else, Noah, you want to remark about this? What's one of your favorite features that both the Sequoia and the Forerunner have? You remember? Um, it's, it has something to do with a hatch. Oh yeah, they have the, the back can roll down the rear window can roll yeah. down yes yeah, so that's a, another feature that okay. a lot of people love is the rear window still goes down and the Forerunner, the Tacoma and the full-size Crewmax Tundra not the uh, double cab let's see so the Sequoia has the ability to open the hatch remotely from the remote also a button inside the cab and a way to close it and that is comes in pretty handy when your hands are full of um, you know, groceries or camping gear, or whatever. This one does not, even the limited still is the old school. You know, they, they, it shows it's like a quick release, but all it is is this button and you still have to pull it up. So is what it is. I think it's a convenience option for the Sequoia for sure. But Sequoia wins in that respect for, for plush, for plush things. Okay, watch your head. Sequoia wins. Okay. Stock ground clearance on the Forerunner is nine inches. Stock on the Sequoia is 9.9, .9, so an inch more stock. And that's part of it because as the rear IFS, or independent rear suspension, versus independent front suspension, both of them have IFS. The, the rear is where it's gonna be different. You have the solid axle on the rear with the Forerunner, and you have the IRS on the Sequoia, which is very unique. I don't know of too many other, the, the Forerunners or the Toyotas that do that. Even the Land Cruiser is still a straight axle in the back. Um, Capability-wise, off-roading, 
The TRD models are going to surpass what the Sequoia can do just because it has the rear locker, the craw control, the A-Track. This has a center differential lock in it, and of course, four high, four low. The TRD models of the Forerunner still have the manual four by four, and we get a shot of that. Only on the TRD models, the rest are the um, electronic. So that's the manual four by four lever. If you're doubting the off-road capabilities of the Sequoia, there's a guy I follow on Instagram called the Arizona Secundra, and it has video of him doing Hell's Gate and Imogene Pass, completing them both in his same exact converted Sequoia Secundra, but it's the cavalry blue. I don't know, I'll plug him just cause like I was inspired when he, um, he just did his gears, which I'm gonna do with this. I'm gonna change the gears out to 529s and get some power and torque back, hopefully some gas mileage back. But uh, just wanted to add that in there because I was blown away when I saw the videos of him pulling off this super narrow, um, you know, incredibly steep part at Hell's Gate. That's all I just want to add that. I haven't owned both these vehicles. This is my third Forerunner. This is my first Sequoia in this generation. I had a first generation. Love this thing. And, the, and it has this, the 2018 Tundra conversion. Whoa. Sequoia Tundra, Secundra. If you're trying to decide, the two big key differences, I took notes just to reiterate it all. Interior space. Comfort and amenities, the Sequoia by far. Power and towing, Sequoia. Miles per gallon, Forerunner. Parking it, Forerunner. It's not that much bigger, but for sure it's bigger. But the, the turning radius on these is really close. I was imp incredibly impressed with the Sequoia on its ability to bust U-turns um, because of the, sh the, the, the shorter wheelbase, say, compared to like a, a um, Suburban or an excursion or expedition. Um, Off-road capabilities, the Forerunner, it's more, it's smaller, nimble, lighter, um, particularly the TRD models because of the, you know, the locker, the craw control, which I really never use, A-Track, but these both have A-Track. <laughs> and let's see, the price, the Forerunner is going to win, I mean, uh, it, similarly equipped, just say SR5 models. You're talking about thirty-six, thirty-eight thousand dollars this one's around about $45,000, so, you know, it's almost 10 grand more um, for just the SR5s. Limiteds and TRDs, you're talking a whole nother thing. I think these are about 50 grand now, 48, 50 grand for a TRD premium, um, the, the TRD off-road premium versus like I say, a limited. And then uh, I would say for, if you're trying to have something different that not everyone has, that out here in Hawaii, a lot of people have forerunners. I see them a lot more, but if you want something more unique, I would say go with the Sequoia. And if you really want to get unique, do the conversion. There's been a few of these been done. They take a, the, the Tundra front clip and just fully convert the whole thing. Fenders, hood, the grill, the, the rest of the engine bay, everything still is the same. And as my son said, he likes the Sequoia better. He loves all the room. He loves piling all his buddies in there. We take him all to the beach. We go to the skate park, the bikes. He loves the cargo space. He loves the snorkel, which we never really drive in any rivers here. But, uh, and it's, it comes into use too for just, you know, dusty roads. It kind of keeps your intake up higher. Um, what else, Noah? Anything else to, to cap it off? Yeah. What is it? The Sequoia wins. <laughs> Forerunner, though, it's still an amazing truck. You know, you can't go wrong either one. The Toyota name, both have legendary motors in them. The 4.0, the 5.7 liter, um, both timing chains. You never have to worry about changing the timing belt in it or worry about that braking. And then, you know, tons of mods. I think there's a lot more options for modifications, a lot of aftermarket products for this, but I th that now the Sequoia is getting more um, popular and more affordable because you can find older ones now um, for less than 20 grand and then you can do the, a lot of different mods. Tandem Off-Road is a great place to start. I'll plug those guys. They have not sponsored this at all, but I know they make some really great Sequoia um, products. And that's about it, guys. If you have any questions about either one of these trucks, um, please feel, you know, comment question in the comment box. Feel free to subscribe. We're gonna do full walk-arounds of both these trucks and go through the mods on all of them. This one has Icon suspension. This one actually has the Bilstein um, TRD Pro suspension with resis in the back. A lot of different things done to these trucks. So I'll put all that, all the whole list of them in the, in the video description. And uh, yeah, thanks for watching. Hope this helps you decide on, you know, whether you want a Forerunner Sequoia or even go back to the Tacoma. I, I don't know, but uh, that's it. All right, guys, thanks for watching. Talk to you next time. Bye. Let's go. Oh, you're driving that one.